All right. Well, I, I'm going to keep my eye out for um, Stacy and Stephanie. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> Grace did the, did the original photo um, oh, or, or Adele, either one. Did either of you guys get the, 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 the email? I got email with three photos. Okay, is um can you tell if Stacy and Stephanie are on that group? I can't, I'm just not sure which. Yes, so there's okay. the Del Rini, Stacy, Stephanie. Yep. Okay, great. Yeah, that's everybody who's <clears throat> registered for the class. So that's good. Yeah, I got it twice. Okay, good. Yeah, we, we, we before before you got on. Before you came on, we had a, uh, we, were, uh, we moved into panic mode, <laughs> but then we came back. We're going to go in. Now we're going to get to move into Cezanne mode. Um, <clears throat> yeah. And this, but, and this is the, also the, uh, if you look at the whole rectangle, which I think is like super important, um, you. you know, how Cezanne works with his. Uh, with the space, um, a lot of his still lives kind of hang high in the rectangle. Um, and if you look here, this this particular sketch, which is full of so many design gems, um, it looks like it's just a little scratchy one off. And it, it is in a way, but the the concept, the design concepts are so well ingrained um, that they're they're almost unassuming. You don't necessarily mm -hmm. see them, but. Um, the, the, there's a bowl that kind of trails off, <clears throat> very subtle background. Um, it is, it is a sketch. It's kind of a warm up. Um, hopefully, well, I don't know if, uh, there's a second, there's this second bowl, which is a little bit more refined. And I think you'd probably call it a little bit more, um, Cezanne -y, if you, if you want. Um, it's almost like too formal. This has this like kind of naturalistic direct observation um which i dig and then this has you know the arrangement of the bottle you know it's like coming upon you know like a cooking situation where you know everything is kind of haphazard here um you know you just appear and then this one is kind of explicitly designed like moving every apple to fit into you know, hopefully you can see this kind of like penta pentagon shape i don't know it's like a pentagon five sided and then <clears throat> very balanced um you know very composed um where this where the where the first one which you're going to sketch um is a little bit more naturalistic and you kind of can easily get in a sense easy i find it um easier to get into the um the immediate responses and what Cezanne relies on, the concepts that he relies on, um, you know, to, to, to draw that. Then he develops further um, in these in these watercolors. So this is actually a watercolor, where this one is a, um, you know, the pencil drawing. And uh, the, the, the piece that, the landscape, and I did want, I mean, there's a side of me that wanted to do um, see if we could squeeze them all in a portrait, a landscape, um, and a still life all in like the same class. So I doubt that's going to happen. And I don't think we should really push it. I think we should just kind of like enjoy the, uh, enjoy, enjoy and savor the orange, um, and well, you know, and the landscape as well. I think those are two you know, reasonable, um, pieces so anyway <clears throat> i was i need I, it's not going to fit on the screen so as we draw the details um you know just be aware of the rectangle and how um you know some of these and how how the, the fruit kind of sit inside of that rectangle because it's also very saison saison really does have a beautiful understanding of the rectangle and how his objects fit inside of that frame as did all of kind of the 19th century French French painters. It just sort of goes with the territory. Um, all right. So just a quick plan of attack um, and we'll get into the nitty gritty. Um, we're going to start with the, 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 the orange that is not overlapped. It's like the central figure. Um, it almost feels like a crescent moon because there's the shadow side um, and then there's the light side. So 
immediately with this one orange, we can tell that the light source is coming from the left. This this looks like a like a, a, a duck or a goose that's like looking at the ground. Do you see how it looks like it's looking at the ground? Yeah. I was like, I, I was photographing this and I was like, why did I draw a duck? Like, why did I do that? And it's not actually a duck. It, this is actually supposed to be a light bulb. So I drew, so this is the light bulb kind of helping to let us know where the light source is. And I probably should have just drawn, I should have drawn a window because of, because of course this was done in natural light. Um, but it looks so much like a duck. It's so funny. Oh, <clears throat> we're going to go with the, the, the first orange and then we're going to like look at 360 degrees, almost like a clock face and follow his very delicate, very deliberate um, line weight. And he's got it all. I mean, he has the full range of line weight from you know a double line to make it thick, even like triple line at some point. Then it transitions out, you know, it goes, it goes lighter, then it goes darker, then it disappears, then it picks up and goes dark again. So we're gonna analyze what that line is doing all the way around. Then we're going to see how that orange relates to the one next to it. And then we'll draw the second one. And it has a, you know, there's a cast shadow from the first orange onto the second orange. There's a shadow side, then there's a cast shadow from the second orange onto the bowl. So now we have a three objects and then we'll kind of like, you know, gently move back. There's this wonderful, wonderful moment. And I don't want to give out any of these spoilers, but um, there's this moment where the, the first orange and we'll call it the third orange, the other orange that doesn't overlap, um, they almost kiss right here. Um, so there's this, wonderful little tension and um, spatial gutter that exists, um, you know, between those two oranges. And it's, it is just, it is a, uh, you know, these two round orbs next to one another creating that little space between. Um, it's almost a little naughty, but it's just also very, very beautiful. Um, and yeah, and then we'll see what else we, what else we dig into. Um, this, I mean, I really do think this was um, him you know, discovering, learning about this grouping um, of oranges and then would, you know, would lead to this watercolor, which then led to, um, you know, some of it, you know, like his larger oil paintings. <clears throat> so it is preparatory. And that's what, uh, you know, that's what drawing really is, is always been used for. Um, in the essay, in the beginning of the book, um, people only really discovered Cezanne's watercolors um, posthumously, is that what it is when after you die? So yeah, like nobody had ever seen, they were all like, like just stored up in his studio and no one had ever really seen them. And so it was a huge revelation, his drawings um, and watercolors um, that, you know, had made, they created like a, a big splash, you know, even after he died, you know, most people, I mean, he was very famous and noted and, you know, loved and respected in his lifetime. But it almost happened. There was like a second. There was like a second round of it, um, because no one ever, no one had ever seen the stuff. It never made it into the gallery. Um, and on top of it, this is a really nice. It's a really nice warm up um, because it's a very limited subject, and all it really entails is line. So it includes um, some shadows, and it includes suggestions of light and shade. Um, but there's just really a lot expressed um, with just very limited, um, with a limited set of marks. So that should be kind of, I think it should be fun. Okay. Are you guys ready to fire it up? Okay. Let's go. Thumbs up. It's so fun. It's so cute. Because when all the kids come on, and some of these classes are getting really big. We've got like 12 or 13, 14 kids. And so I have this whole wall of these little thumbnails. And I'm like, are right, we ready to go? Can I get a thumbs up? And there's like, everyone throws their thumbs up. It's awesome. <clears throat> okay. So the way, I mean, I don't even know how to, I have to find the bottom of my picture here. Okay. So I have a little bit more real estate than I think. So I'm just gonna start with a very light circle to plot it out. And remember, we're not actually drawing 
oranges, we're drawing a Saison. So our mark makings are going to be, our mark making is going to be a little bit different. We're trying to, we're going to attempt to learn his methods and then you can take it directly to you know, like you, the bowl of fruit that's in your kitchen, whatever, whatever it is. Um, I really think you should do it. Cause I taught this class. I taught, I taught this on Monday and then I went down and had my cup of coffee and I just immediately put it to the test and my, the drawings downstairs, but um, after we do this, it'll be so fresh that you want to kind of take it out into the field, you know, and work from direct observation um, and look for some of the, you know, some of the same things and use some of the same, um, you know, these techniques. Um, okay, so I have my, I have my circle and maybe I should just, in one sense, I want to start at a, at a familiar place, like, and, and 12 o'clock is a good place to start. Um, there are the, you know, the 12 o'clock, there's just very light lines and then right. And if I go counterclockwise, I'm getting to like 11. Um, I'm starting there because that's where like kind of the first element of the dark mark is. So I can see a light mark at the very top. I can see a gap, meaning like a hole, a lost, a lost moment where there's no line. And then we'll kind of come down the side and, you know, he feels he feels and finds the line with the sketchiness. I'm not a huge, um, you know, I was taught to draw like point to point and like make bold, like um, kind of more confident marks, like kind of like go for it, like aim and fire. Um, it's not always the most useful like method of, you know, finding the edge of an object. And he definitely makes it a little sketchy. When I say sketchy, meaning like like short, brief um, lines that you know that you know he's looking, he's making a mark, he's looking back, he's making mark, he's looking back, and you know, even though we're not looking at nature itself, um, we can try to load and fire these little short marks and try to make only the marks that he's making. That might be like kind of an interesting way of thinking about it. I mean, there's to 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 trans. To, tr to like make this turn at six o'clock, he's using three separate silhouette marks. And that does three things. It's, I believe that there were three observed marks. I mean, he could, may have been sliding to the left, sliding to the right. Um, internally, they may be a little bit of a texture. These are oranges. And so the oranges have little pores and stipples. Um, so that there may be like a textural component as well. Um, and then we'll keep riding up this end. Light, you know, lifting my pencil so that it's super soft. It disappears around three o'clock. We can start to find the roundness of the circle again. He finds it. And then from, I don't know what you call this, two o'clock. There's like one clean line. So. Um, I don't see any indication of an eraser or really any blending. Um, I think there might be a little bit of blending. Um, I think he makes the marks and he wipes them with his finger probably. You know, that, but, but we can even like try that right now. Cause you know, having done that silhouette line there's not much more to this orange. I mean, I was thinking circle um, but it is in fact a sphere. So you're kind of drawing the edge of a sphere. So like the edge of that sphere, there's always, there's like the, the 3D roundness, you know, it's, you're actually turning the corner, um, finding this little horseshoe shadow, which could be the navel of that orange. And then he does give us a little bit of an indication of value, meaning that, that there is in fact a shadow side. I wonder if I, and I did just blend that with my finger. To suggest some tone. Oof, I don't know if that was the right move, but it, it looks like it, doesn't it? Yeah. It looks like he had gone harder with the lines inside the orange and then he, then he softened them. I mean, it, it feels like that to me. And he may have even gone back in and reinforced the shadow side. So there's the conceptually, you can really see, I'm gonna draw this line here. You know, the light is doing this. 
maybe even maybe even wider. Yeah. And that is this that is this plane of light that's that's coming through. All right. So with that, let's that there's not much of an indication of the cast shadow, but there is a cast shadow um, underneath here. So that's where the object is throwing its shadow. Um, then it's quickly um, the shadow is interrupted um, by our second orange. And where our first orange, you could argue, is like as circular as possible. Um, the second orange is more of an oval. It's taller um, than it is wide. So we're getting into this idea of theme um, and variation. So yes, they're all spheres. Yes, they're all oranges. But there's going to be a variation enough to make each one kind of unique that it never gets too repetitive. So we're starting from the known, which is our first orange, and then we're gonna you know, move into the unknown, which is orange number two on the left. And orange number two is, is significantly taller um, than orange number one. And it's both taller on the, the peak, and then also it goes back in space. So if you were to run a horizontal across, um, I would argue that the, the first orange is a slightly lower than the second orange. There is a horse, another horseshoe shadow on orange number two and something that looks like it could be, you know, where the stem is or the navel. The navel's at the bottom, the stem's at the top, um, or however you want to think about it. You, you could go about bottom or top. It doesn't actually, it depends on whether you call it where, how the fruit hangs or how the flower grows. <clears throat> and I'm wondering, um, Cezanne in his figures, and when he's drawing figures and drawing sculptures, um, he is an enclosure kind of guy. Um, when I say enclosure, I mean, he's thinking about the far left-hand side and then the far right-hand side. So I think some of these arches, you know, the, the arch on the left and this arch on the right, you know, this shadow, um, I think they may, like, even like the, 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 the arc that's inside the navel portion, I think might have a relationship to the outside. So the, the left side um, of our orange, both the shadows and the silhouette are kind of grabbed at with parentheses, like a, a, a series of parentheses. And it, and, it, and it creates that kind of, you know, pixelated orange, that, that um, the panoramic view, there's, there's, there's multiple, um, slightly moved edges, you know, so there's, this is not a constant line. I mean, this is, there's like one step of this edge and then it gets wider here and then it gets wider there. I mean, if you were to see this in real life, it would look like it was already slightly peeled. We do get an indication of the core of the shadow, which is so nice. And some suggestion of these parallel lines He's you know, obviously right-handed laying in um, these tones, these parallel lines that suggest the, the value of the shadow. So we can do, a, um, we can do this kind of self-evaluation, just going around 360 degrees around the orange and just to make sure that we've included everything. Um, there's this little notch in the top, which is interesting, and then at 12 o'clock, that line is lost, meaning it it's disappears completely. I'm feeling good about the, the edge of the shadow and the edge of the orange and some of those tones. There's a break between the silhouetted edge, both on the second arch and the second to the third arch. And then there's some, a concentration of arches in that lower shadow where it looks as though the orange has contact 
with the lip or the rim um, of the bowl. So we're gonna get a we're gonna get this nice ellipse of the bowl, and I don't want to get ahead of myself because I just went I just I'm just trying to traverse the the clock of the orange number two. The bottom um, after that concentration of parentheses um, where it's in contact with the ground, it gets light again, and then it turns. So I know they're just oranges. But hopefully you can see that with the with the line weight variation, it has a certain shimmer and it has an ephemeral beauty that is hard to, you know, there's there's no one else that really has done it quite like this. Um, and and I just love I mean, I just I just love it. I think getting into you know knowing the nature of it's really about knowing the nature of line. Um, rather than like the nature of oranges. And I think that's, I, I think that I, I, I can't imagine any Cezanne historian or Cezanne himself would kind of, you know, disagree with that. At this, at, you know, not that he doesn't love and appreciate oranges and not that he doesn't love and appreciate light, um, but it's, it, it's how he's using the line in relationship to those things. Um, that make it really special. Um, so we've got, we're kind of like, I'm kind of like overly loving on these lines here, um, but we are gonna have to switch now into um, composition um, and arrangement. And some of these, you know, really beautiful um, semicircles um, and the way that these semicircles, you know, the, the oranges, relate. So we're going to have to, we've related the first orange to the second orange, and then the second orange to the bowl a little bit. Um, but let's see if we can get orange number three. Um, we'll do this, this cluster, this front cluster. So we're going to come up from orange number one, kind of go back to the beginning, climb up this side and see the contact point where the third orange, the one in the back relates to the first orange and the second orange. And this is like, I mean, it is the orange number three. I mean, this is like a firework display. Um, I mean, the, the it's totally broken. And to be able to get, you know, these two, con there's essentially two contact points um, with the first orange. And that's just amazing. That I mean, it's like, it's almost like the audacity of that um, coming up the side and you know the orange dipping down, appearing to go higher, and then dipping down. Then there's this little notch, and then it dips back down again. You know, and I think you could, you know, I think that the you know the Cezanne took a lot of flack from a lot of kind of traditionalists um, because they would read this as being inaccurate. And, and, and it's not inaccurate. It's like they, it's like they didn't get it. They, they perceived this disconnect right here between the, the tr like one edge and three edges of the same orange. Um, they read that as being false observation or a, like a mistake, like being an, an inaccurate inability to measure or place. And my, I, I mean, Cezanne was like, he literally wrote it down how he could draw from one perspective. And then if he just leaned a little bit to the right, everything would change. And, and he could be infatuated with the same subject, just slightly moved to one side um, or the other. And so what he, his ultimate style was combining all of those views, the, the central view, the view a little bit to the left and the view a little bit to the right. Um, so he brought them all together. So this is, in fact, not a mistake in the sense that I think a lot of people maybe misunderstood him. And I think possibly even, um, you know, I mean, even like in the essay, they, they like apologize for his, um, you know, his like lack of kind of like draftsmanship talent. And it's like, no, that's not what it is. Granted, I don't think he was... His methods worked well 
his lenses for perceiving the world and his uh, tools for marking down what he saw lent themselves really well to landscape and uh, still life. Those, the, same, the same usages didn't necessarily translate quite as well into the figures. At least I would claim that. And, and I think that, again, I think that some people, it's really easy to throw the baby out with the bathwater when you see, I mean, I was, when I did, when I went to Paris a month and a half ago, we went into the Cezanne room at Musée d'Orsay and they, and they had, you know, not all of his landscapes. They had all of his figure compositions and his portraits. And as far as portraits go, they definitely fall a little bit flat. As far as landscapes of people, they were really good. They were really nice. But when you're using landscape techniques that are masterful, try to apply that same thinking to a portrait, it comes out not as registering so much as beauty. Um, but <clears throat> we don't have to go into that. This, the, the still life is, the still life is definitely well employed. Um, you know, the techniques really lend themselves nicely to this subject matter. Um, I think possibly my favorite um, orange in this whole group um, is this fourth cluster back here. So it's right, left, right, left. Um, let's, let's do this one. It's, it's like, it looks like, it's like a perfect rainbow. Um, we're gonna do a very light line. We're gonna come down the side. And it's just so, it's just so delicate and so perfectly round. So good, so good. Mm -hmm. There's a little teeny shadow indicated this little, this little uh, triangle, curving triangle, almost like a, looks like a talon of a hawk, hawk talon shadow. <clears throat> and then we will put the horizon line in there, but I, the horizon line meaning the edge of the table. I'm gonna put that in. I'm not gonna put the, the shadow in yet. I wanna be able to place our objects and then kind of see the hole and see why he may have needed to put that in, um, this, this shadow that is. Ooh, let's see, what's up with Stace? I just got a text from her. Oh. We're gonna try and get her in. <clears throat> nice. Does, it, does, any, does anybody, do you all have any questions? So I did, when I put in the second, uh, the third, excuse me, the third, you know, the, 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 the third orange, I did modify my first orange. And that's what, that, you know, you're collecting data as you go. And you know things change as conditions change. So I did my best for the circle, but the second one allowed me to see the first one better. And then the third one's gonna allow me to see the fourth one better. And it just keeps going. Uh, there's a moment, an intersection right here where um, that, that had to have been kind of a direct observational phenomenon. So there's the, it makes this little, the front, the second orange intersects with the third orange and they almost create their own, you know, that, that really intense intersection of these two shadows where there's lost and found. You can lose a line where it disappears. You can also lose a line where two lines come together at the same value. And, you know, it, it creates almost like this, almost like a, that cliche of the bird shape, you know, that bird off in the distance. And... Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, and it, that's also really, I just have to, I have to explain. If you're going to have dark lines that break, you're going to have light lines that disappear. You've got to have <clears throat> dark lines that also join. Um, that's a thing. Uh, same thing with the uh, shadow down here, you know, the base of the orange and then the cast shadow of the orange. All right. All of this was built up for the, for the, for the, 
I wouldn't call it the grand finale, but it's it's my favorite part, which is the relationship between um, these two oranges that are just about to touch. And, you know, where they're at their closest part is above three o'clock. So you kind of have to find that angle. And it's so weird because because of their relationship, their center lines almost give you a vector. Do you see how like the center, because they kiss right there, or they come so close to touching right here, that re that creates a point of intersection, which also creates like another axis. So there, there's a center line that runs through these, um, which is just so good. Um, and if you want to make something go back into space, that's how you can use, you know, the tension between these intersections. I mean, it's just so, it's so smart. Um, so I'm going to run, you can, if you want, um, that angle, that angle vector, you know, where they're closest to one another, that's where I, you know, that's my first mode. Um, in art school, where they will tell you, what they would tell you to do is run your verticals and run your horizontals. And it's not as successful, but it's also helpful. So for example, we have the base of our, you know, the, the, the distant orange, the removed orange, the fifth orange. Um, you can run a horizontal and see where that lines up with um, in relationship to our first orange. And it's about a third. So I'm gonna run my horizontal from the known into the unknown. So I know about where my base is. Um, you could run an angle from the top. Um, and now that you have a starting point and an ending point, you can then connect you know, the, the contact point with the silhouette edge. Oh my God, that one is touching. No, it's not. So there's so much tension where are they touching? Are they not touching? Are they really far apart or are they really close together? Spectacular. Um, there's a there's the cast shadow from the first one that helps almost conceal the 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 variation in the the edge. I mean the 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 audacity at this period in time to say I'm comfortable with four separate edges is, is, is awesome. And it really was too much. It was too much for some people. It's too much for some people today. Um, there's zero shadow. So if you follow the, the thread of these pearls, you know, one, two, three. Um, the second pearl, the one in the, the first orange has slight shadow. The third one has you know, intense shadow. And then the one that we just, that we're still in the process of sketching um, has, has none. So we have these, these themes. Look at those three edges, all separate and all true. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <clears throat> so um, I was able to throw the shadow onto the onto the, the bowl because the, the bowl was introduced. Um, this shadow from our from the the far right uh, orange, we can't really put that shadow in now. And if you, and hopefully you get that because if I were to put the shadow in now it would be going into nothing. It would be going onto something that hasn't been established. So I'm going, I need to do our final orange. I need to show where that is. Or, you know, the multiple locations, I should say. Um, show all of the places that it is. It's more accurate. And then you have a, the silhouetted edge of the tabletop not silhouetted edge, excuse me, you have the horizon line edge of the table. So now I've got my, all of my elements, uh, you know, placed. The table, the edge of the table, the wall, the bowl, and all of the fruit. 
Um, so now that this orange is in here, now I can start thinking about, okay, so this light is coming from the right. The orange um, is in light and it's throwing, blocking the light from hitting the lower part of the final orange. So there's, there's a difference between just making marks to see them and then making marks that are loaded with knowledge of what's actually happening. I just can't get over how, um, how, how the shimmer, I mean, how it, it, my, you know, in, in a way, like my interpretation of it, I, I like my drawing, yeah, you know, because it's derivative and it's less, um, it was, it's, it's searching less, um, but it's, it's, it's so pretty. and it looks like it's a round table so i thought maybe it was a round table up here mm -hmm. but it really it hits it hits this maybe it's not a round table this line here this is the bowl isn't it so yeah yeah that's the bowl so we get this larger ellipse okay that makes sense and yeah so the 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 bowl has a thickness to the lip and then it has the side of the bowl so let, we can actually get into that now um you know, there's a, the thickness of the width of the lip of the bowl. And then it helps showing the side of the bowl down here. Um, and there is shadow on the lip of the bowl from our first orange. And then there's an, a shadow on the kind of, um, on the curving part of the, of, the, of the bowl. The bowl is, you know, carved out. The wood is carved out. Um, it's a shallow bowl. It's a fruit bowl. Um, but you can actually see how the shadows, the cast shadows from these oranges are round, but then they're being thrown onto a curved surface. It's really nice too. So these, these shadows are very special in the sense that they are, they're, they're curving, representing the, the nature of the object that's creating the shadow, which is round, and then it's being thrown on another round surface. So a round bowl, with, with spheres, um, you know, there's, 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 a, there's a shape association there. Now, I don't know what is going on here. I'd love to get your mm -hmm. feedback on that. This must be the cast shadow from the bowl onto the table. Oh. Perhaps. Is there a handle or something? Maybe? Yeah, yeah, right, right exactly. That's oh. what I don't, that's what I don't know. Yeah, like it, like this comes, I'm not sure. Then there's the edge of the tabletop. And I think they want that. He, I think he wants this tabletop to be light. So he has to darken the background. Um, a lot of the backgrounds we can look around. There was drapes. There were, there were dark drapes. Um, and he would often do pat, you know, show the pattern. Let me erase these birds. Not because I don't like them. I might put them back in, but they were a little distracting. There's this dark note right here. This is where I'm like kind of punching my darks where I can see these. Um, I hadn't mentioned it, but um, I think a lot of the, these, the, the finding marks um, are kind of straighter on the straighter. I mean, you can make, you, know, you can make a, a, a straight line and a curved line very similar, you know, when, especially when they're short, you know, when you're short scratchy. I'm looking at the bottom, you know, moving from the shadow um, up into the light, you know, I'm seeing them expressed with just, you know, like any curve is a, a delicate curve um, to the point where some of those, you know, the straight lines combined to suggest a curve, like one, two, three, four. And I think this effect can be artificially created. Um, you know, you can just kind of make it, make it scratchy. I don't think he was 
artificially doing it. When I say artificial, I mean, they were, each line really was observed and a, and a record of an observation um, from perhaps intentionally moving from side to side um, to get that variation. Um, not, not scratchy for being scratchy, not for the sake of scratchiness. <clears throat> Not a bad warm up. Nice. Um, there is another intersection of this shadow. So where the object of the orange is passaged, meaning separated, um, the, the cast shadow is not. It's an interesting thing too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So while he doesn't put any, practically any texture on the oranges, no. he shows the texture in the contour of the orange because it's kind of bumpy, seems like. I think you're right. Yep. Especially, especially the second one we drew. Yeah. <laughs> the one shadow I find strange is the the one cast from the far right one onto the back one. Mm -hmm. um, I, do I do too. Because it's too straight. It should be a little more curved, it seems to me, to... I think so, yeah, and to I'm, match I'm the curvature of the back orange, you know. Are you seeing? Oh. See where my pencil is. Are you seeing maybe a little indication of the round bottom? You know, if I were to put this yeah. in here, is there yeah. the bottom of that orange? Mm. Um, yeah. you ever seen those, yeah. Have you ever seen this? The the straight line here. Uh -huh. um, I think he was. I think what he was doing was he was going for the parallel. You know, these parallel lines. Um, yeah, maybe. But what it does is because it's on the 3D property, it make. You ever seen an orange that like sits too long, and yeah, then it yeah. moves, and it has that flat. Is like the, it, it does alto, actually flatten out. That's what it reads like, um, and where you have the flat angle here, on the tabletop. I mean, honestly, this would be a, a moment where a curved shadow yeah, exactly would be more appropriate. I think you're. I think you're really 100%. And the thing is, it would also offer um, a, a variation in how you indicate the shade. Yeah. Uh, good call. Because he, because he, it's not like he doesn't do that in other places. I mean, you, he does give you a, a slightly curvilinear shadow in the round part of the bowl. Mm -hmm. um let me show you another 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 method of seeing this um which i didn't really bring up um but i think it's important to to know because he really plays up this next part um in, in, in another way of seeing it. So if you were to, can you see that there's like all of the oranges themselves? Like if you were to take like a, a board, you could lay the board along the top and it wouldn't be rippled. It would like touch all the tops of these. Um, the, you can almost play out the contact points of these oranges, one in the middle, one on this side, one on this side, and then this one over here. <clears throat> the contact point at the very tops of these oranges make a uh, pentagon. Wow. Um, so there's like this, there's a top plane 
and then you know they make these side plans wow yeah that's fascinating yeah thanks um and then i mean thank Cezanne, but um and then you have this ellipse where they all kind of sit on top of that ellipse so that's that's you know and then and then of course you have the horizon line so those are like kind of like the encapsulating geometric forms and then so having seen that now look at this one where you know it becomes almost like almost painfully obvious the uh pentagon that he's employing for the mass and then he tilts every he tilts everything to the side which is hilarious um it's almost like he was playing it was almost like he was playing up the idea of uh things rolling around and being off balance you know i mean I, you could almost i mean if you were to see him if you were to see him make art i think that he would be moving he'd be like he'd be moving side to side or he might actually even like he might actually even draw like this you know, like he might actually he might his back might actually be angled um i mean you can see these lines are parallel and then you know but yet, yet the bowls the the oranges feel like they can you know roll off of that bowl and then he gives you this one that seems to be almost in motion just kind of it's just it's just interesting um yeah. so i think you know having seen those five on a plate um you know are he hadn't quite gotten there so this is this is kind of what he observed in nature and then this is what he you know this one being off to the side you know he he likes there being an orange that's detached um and you know he then he just adds it on here you know and that doesn't even feel like an orange it feels like a peach or something so maybe he needed like look how round all of those are yeah you know, i just it, it's almost like he should stick to the I find this not as pleasing, although this would, I would find it m more Cezanne, um, you know, than, than this one. But this one feels, and that's why I love drawing. I mean, I, it's, it's more intimate and, and it's, it's, I think it's, it has, it's, it's, it's closer. And let's let Stacy in. And then we'll have, maybe we'll have a little review if you guys don't mind. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness stay say did you have did you have a photo shoot in hollywood this morning <laughs> let's see here <clears throat> um yeah anybody want to show anybody want to show what they got you care if i stop to stop to share sure. Sure. <laughs> all right i'm gonna stop it so i can see adele's <laughs> want me to start oh uh, yeah I, I did I did just talk the whole damn time so um, nice oh yeah that is really nice okay hold on let me pin you mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hit. oh yes okay yeah it looks great I'm actually I'm at, it almost I don't know if this is what you intended or whether this is what Cezanne intended but I'm seeing something that I had not seen before it nice. almost feels like these are pinwheel these it almost feels like they're spinning a little bit you see how this one spins into this one and then spins into that one mm. and then I, I mean that's another way another filter with which you can see is how one runs into the other like in a figure eight and then this one rolls into this one and like the top one can come down into the front one and like in the s curves they can all you know interrelate um definitely another filter um and he does that with many other objects um on a large you know uh, compositionally compositional wide um, yeah. Do you have any reflections? Did you have any? Did you have any discoveries along the way? 
Oh, nice shadows over here too. Those your shadows feel like shadows even more than his. Well, I felt I kept having to punch the um, punch the darks. Yeah. Um, go back and do that so that um, there's a little more contrast, and I felt happier with it after that. Um, Leave it. Yeah, because you can ease. You can like you can like ease into it's so, it's like because when you're it's like jumping into the dot. You know, like you know you you walk in step by step into the shallow end. Yeah. You know, and then once you're acclimated to the water getting in and jumping out, getting in and jumping out, you know, that's like, it, you're, you're, you feel, you're, you're, you're like, you're acclimated. Um, and yeah, that, that is what that's about is when you're, it's just left over from, and, you know, easing into the design. Um, it, uh, who wants to go next, Maureen or Grace? Okay. I think that was Maureen. I don't know if you can see it. Place for oh, yeah. That's yeah, so neat. Oh, wow. Yeah. This is beautiful. This is a big window. It's kind of glary here, so. <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a new way of making marks, isn't it? You know, yeah, like I, yeah, yeah. We have like a day. Really... I went back and started. To, I kind of punched my darks, and it really changed the looks of it. You know, yeah. I'm not done, but I feel like I could. I really enjoyed this. This was great. Yeah, pop it, pop it into um, everybody. I mean, um, observe the 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 rectangle that he had it in. Um, yeah. You know, and like, you know, see, because there is a relationship to objects to mm -hmm. the frame, you know, and like on the right side, you know, the, the bowl goes off screen for crying out loud. Right. And then, you know, so that and, you know, so it's like how the oranges relate and then how, you know, how much room is above versus below. A lot more room at the bottom of the paper and then at the top of the paper. And um, to me, there should have been um, more, maybe there, there's a tiny little line, but the two, the very two back oranges, yeah. see the space in between those two? Yes. Yeah. Yes. You know, Good call. Great call. Really, really light, light, light line, but it, it looks. It is there though. It, it is, is there. It, yeah. yeah. It is there. And I, um, and I left it out in this, in this dialogue. Um, I included it in the, wait. Let me see if I can find the one. I'll, I'll show you the one I did for the Monday's class. Uh, and then Grace, are you? Did you want to show? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Oh man, wait till we get into this landscape. You guys are gonna flip out. Okay, hold on, let me pin you. Oh, oh that's nice, Grace. Cool. Wow. Uh, These are great. Class. Stacy. Classic Grace. Oh, it's good. <laughs> Happy New Year, everybody. This is so. This is such a treat. I love art so much. It's so funny. Um, okay, I'm gonna pop this out. No, I can. I can show you through. I cropped it like an idiot. I'll show it to you anyway. Stacy, where cool. are you? Oh, can you see me? You look yeah. outside. Yeah, you're outside. Yeah, I'm on my way in, having walked Tuck Tuck, Tucker, excuse me. Oh, okay. But I'm listening and I've been watching. This is so cool. Cool. There's my, uh, here's my Monday class. Really um, good. Stacy, you came in at a really good time. But I left out the middle line there too. I acknowledged it. But maybe <laughs> I was like, maybe I was like, it's, it's, maybe it's sassier to leave the line out. <laughs> Well, you are sassy. It, it doesn't take away from your drawing, but it just made me look harder. The one from today, I mean, my second round, I think is way stronger. But this one was, I was like, holy crap. Because I, I'm not the biggest Cezanne fan, if you haven't noticed. Um, but... I mean, it's you. You can't deny it. You, his landscapes are they. They were life trans. They were life train uh, transforming. His landscapes transformed my life and the way I my love the way my I brain functions. Still yeah. lives too. Still lives have been most helpful. Cezanne still lives most helpful for instructing um, because he because of um, his traditional kind of design elements and his traditional strategies on arranging. Um, but his portraits, I mean, 
maybe I'll it'll I maybe I'll have to be like 80 in order to understand his fully understand his portraits, or maybe or maybe I'm right and then he just he was just struggling. Anyway, it's I think I have thrown away thrown thrown out say because I love portraits so much and capturing the human, the intelligence, the humor, uh, just the mood. Um, the beauty, the all, everything about a, a, the human, it, I, all the things that I value about making art of, about people, um, he doesn't consider. <laughs> it's like it's like he you, he applies everything that is so beautiful about landscapes. He uses the same methods, the same concepts to do people, and it's a whole different set of of conditions and intimacy and understanding um and you know it can be done i mean you can paint people like landscapes but no you really have to paint people like people and you paint landscapes like landscapes um i was telling stacy earlier and this might be helpful i mean this goes back to um you know maureen what you were talking about in the beginning about like growing up or whatever i'm like i've decided that <laughs> I'm going to follow, I'm going to try to really I didn't mean that as a criticism. No, no, I no, it's okay. I didn't take it as a criticism, but I, I, I am going to really try to like follow the rules more. And, you know, I had a teacher that told me that like, you had to know the rules before you can break them as if like breaking the rules was the goal. And like, was the, was the right mood where it's like, you learn the rules so you can follow them because life is easier. Art is better when you follow the rules. Now, occasionally you have to break the rules, um, you know, to save, you know, you, if somebody's dying, you know, somebody's like in a fire in a, in a building and you have to break down the door, breaking and entering. Like sometimes you have to break the rules to save a life. But like most of the time, I think following the rules is better. And I think artistically uh, that is true too. Um, anyway, so that's my little, that's my little, rant or whatever okay. <clears throat> i really am i'm going to try and follow the rules i'm going to try and be a good boy i'm going to try and be a good boy do we dare do we dare try this portrait or the landscape yeah of course i think we should, I think we should. so i i i don't think i'm going to do it in I, the last one I did in color, and I'm not going to show you until the very end. Um, but I think I'm going to do. I mean, I'm going to make this one in, uh, in, in you know, just in, in black and white, like we have it. I think it's going to be really spectacular, um, and I think it's going to actually be more insightful. Um, the kids sometimes they 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 want they want they they need the color, and I I respect that, but. Um, sometimes you don't need the color. All right, so that goes there. This goes here. Hopefully I can be in a position where this stays fixed. Like that. Tape that up. Ooh. <laughs> Um, it's just amazing how these uh, uh, this the content comes into my life. It's uh, it's really special. This is a, just a wonderful book. Um, if you buy if you buy these old you find these old books of these old masters um, when they're about drawing and when they're about sculpture, get them. Um, old painting old books about paintings they have good essays, but the reproductions are really um, really the, not good um, and can actually be almost misleading and damaging in a way. So I would avoid older books on uh, painting, but the books from the 30s to the 70s that are about sculpture and drawing um, and print and printmaking, lithography and etching, it was a really, it was a golden age of reproduction and um, kind of like an understanding of art and art history. So the content is really strong um, and the reproductions are really strong. They just didn't have the color. I mean, they essentially mastered black and white uh, printmaking. 
um, but didn't have the technology for the color. Nowadays, the color is out of control. Out of control, wonderful. I'm gonna get a fresh sheet of paper. But yeah, this book is from 1958 and it's just a wonderful, the drawings are so wonderfully curated. All right, Stace, you got your game face on? I do. And I'm loving that tree. I did. I the I love I love everything about this picture. Um, although they yeah. I, I love I love everything about it. Um, it's full of like it's full of like some awkwardness. Um, it's got very traditional approach. Um, it's got it's got architecture. It's got trees. Um, it's got composition. Um, he's all he's all over the place. I think we will we might need a tortillion. Um, but what we just went over. Um, with the line weight expressions um, it are going to come in so useful. It's going to be so useful what happens with the, um, um, we're going to start. So the plan of attack for this one, Stacy, when we went over the, the, um, the oranges in the last piece, I kind of like gave a, gave a, an overview of how we're going to attack it. Um, and this, the overview of this one is we're going to start with just this very basic rectangle which is the separation between the door and the door frame so that initial rectangle is where we're going to begin and we're going to base everything else off of that so then from there we'll do the door frame you know above and on either side we'll build this little short stack of steps leading out to the path um, one of the main elements that got disrupted in the last picture was the angle from the corner of the step um, the angle of the path, uh, you know, the shrubs that line the path here, um, they're different angles and everybody made them too vertical, like too steep. So we want to like be really aware of like flattening um, that line out. Um, there's not really even a line on this side. It's really just a bush. Um, but, you know, the edge of the bush ha it has an angle too. Um, there's um, some lattice work on the, you know, on the, the side of the wall of the garden. Um, and the lattice work is, you know, you know, sectioned off. Um, there's this kind of incomplete rooftop, which I see it as like a Spanish roof. Have you guys seen these? Um, I didn't do it, I didn't do it over here, sorry. Have you guys seen this, these Spanish roofs where they're essentially, um, Yep. cylindrical tiles yeah and then, yep. and then they go they go they go convex and then they go concave and they and they 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 both make they simultaneously make the roof um and the gutter yep. you know and then they you know this is convex in here you know and then they just go then they just it just keeps going out. it's the same brick tile over and over above below above below I, I, I love them. I think that's what's going on here. Um, so as I, you know, there is an edge that, that has like these little ripples in it, you know, and then they go up. So I think, I think Cezanne, frankly, I think he was a little bit confused and whether he was confused or whether he didn't know how to represent that level of complexity on such a small sketch, um, you know, who knows. But this, when we get into the roof, yes, the roof is just going to be one uh, you know, long rectangle. Um, and a lot of these, a lot of the uh, marks that I think he's doing in here is like, he's managing it in color too. So like the, the drawing for Cezanne is, you know, is like uh, subverted for color. And, you know, the color supports the drawing, the drawing supports the color, um, but they, you know, the, it's not like a traditional line drawing where um, it's heavy, accurate line and then colored in um he's there's the, he saves a lot um of the picture to be um resolved in the in the coloration rather than the drawing so the drawing is abbreviated um you know so that the 
um, the colors can be elevated. And that's, I think it's a very, you know, a common understanding of um, Cezanne. So we will, we don't have a whole lot of time. Um, so that's why I think it's going to be nice. There's the, there's the, the door frame, um, there's the lattice, there's the, the shrubs, which are very kind of abstract suggestions of marks that represent shrubs. There's the path. Then we're going to come back up the hill. And, um, you know, so we're going to do this row of trees. And then we have a very um, economical um, kind of mansion in the background. So very few lines. Um, I'm seeing a mansard roof up in that corner. There's a chimney. Um, I was telling the kids, like, there sometimes there's... Um, there is a very, I mean, if there is a cliche for a house, you know, it is a rectangle with a triangle on top with a rectangular chimney with a window and a door. I mean, this is like, oh, yeah, this is like as kind of cliche as you can get for the symbol of a house, which I love. I mean, I just, I just love it. So there's this little awning on the top of here. So he does give us some architectural details. You know, you can tell that the house goes off in the distance down here, there's a little window there, but it's, um, you know, there's not much to the house um, than these pure uh, geometric shapes. And I think, you know, very, very intentional um, because of the amount of economy that he needed back there. Um, all right, are you guys, is this okay for a second round? Yeah. Nice. <clears throat> round two. Oh my gosh, I'm scared. I'm a little bit scared. Um, what I was, what I mentioned before as well is that the nice thing about architecture, which you can always remember, um, is that architecture is a no matter what angle you go at, your verticals are going to be vertical. You know, you could. If, if there's distortions that happen with the lens, um, but you know, this door frame. Um, the sides of the door are always going to be up and down. Now, in perspective, you know, the top of the door frame, um, conveniently, we're looking directly at, you know, the, the door frame. So it's going to be a horizontal. And that's going to be really nice to set the tone for all of the rest of the, you know, the architecture of the doorway, um, per se. And frankly, there's not very many diagonals um, in the composition. Um, and the ones that are there are just repeated over and over again. You know, you can see it here in this rooftop here, the rooftop here, the rooftop there. Um, I guess we do get this, you know, the angle of the road or whatever. Um, all right. Sweet. Um, do you guys see that there's this, there's a little bit of blue on my picture right here? Yeah. Um, so my theory on this doorway is that we're a little bit to the right, looking into a sunken door frame. Like this is some mm -hmm. kind of cellar. I think there's lattice on the outside of um, a cellar that's been dug into the, the side of the hill. Um, that's my theory. I think this is, you know, the hill and then there's a stone wall lattice in front of it. So that I think there's this, this, this door frame is like a no joke door frame. Um, where it's really like supporting, um, a, you know, a heavier stone wall. So, but before we get into that, um, I just subdivided uh, my door, cut that in half. And then I lined the top. I can see the top of the wooden door. And we've got the structure. There's two, there's like two window panes, I believe. Um, they could be window panes. They could be just lattice on the thickness of the door. You can make it kind of whatever you want. If you wanted to make it a uh, glass, you could put these little horizontal lines that suggest uh, that suggest glass opposed to wood. <clears throat> so there's not much to indicate. Um, well, no, I shouldn't say that. In the whole composition, there's not a, a direct light source. It, the light is coming from up above, but at least in this door frame, if you look at the lattice that runs the thin, uh, thin wood lattice, the right side is darker than the left side. And the 
top of the lattice that goes on the horizontal is lighter than the bottom. So at least the light is coming from up above and it's coming you know, from the left, from what we can see um, just this early on in the picture. Um, we've got the bottom lattice and I think we're gonna get rungs and I, I suspect that they're rungs. So there's gonna be the left side of the rung, the right side of the rung is gonna be in shadow, left side of the rung is light, right side is shadow. Um, we can just kind of fit those, fit those in there, very subtle. Um, very generalized. So this is where I think the kind of the hardest part of the picture is, um, and I'm trying to increase our chances of success. So I'm gonna go for the easy part first. So we did do the top of the door frame as a horizontal. Let's do the thickness of the cross beam. And then we'll see that the door frame is actually like a cube. So we're gonna drop the inside. This is the blue part of the door frame. And then this is the part of the door frame that faces out at us. So this is the, the actual final exterior of the door frame. Now the, the right side is, I think there is a, you might be able to see a little bit, a little bit of the inside, but not really. It's like not indicated. It's just the right side of the door frame is thicker. So he leaves out some. So in order to get the steps, um, we have to go down the step and then across. And then we're gonna go down, and then we're gonna go across, and then we're gonna go down. And that's where the step meets with the path. Now, the reason I started there, um, we can adjust, you know, we can punch our darks and follow the, follow the line weight throughout, you know, all of the marks that we're making. It's just, there's a lot of, um, there's a lot of unknown. It's, it's, it's actually difficult because of the angle um, that the steps were built at or the angle that Cezanne was sitting at. So there's the there's still a little probably a little bit of the thickness of the top of the step, and you can you know look at this line right here. There's this dark note that suggests the um, the lip of the of that step, and then there's the erratic line below that, which shows how that step meets with the what I would consider what I would assume is a dirt path. The base of the door frame disappears behind the bush. Whereas the step on the left um, gives us like a, an, an angle. Now we did a lot of content right here. So let's just re, let's just like go back in and imagine that this is our entire plate of oranges and Let's see if we can adjust this line weight and add some shades, add some tones. Um, the door looks pretty good. Now, the, the difference between the door and the door frame, the door itself is, on the left side at least, is a dark shaded door up against the light of the frame. So I'm going to go back to my door and the door frame intersect, you know, where those two lines, you know, simultaneously overlap, and I need to shade my door. And that's particularly important um, at, at the cross beam because this corner, the door is sunken. So it's throwing, you know, it has a lot of shadow. So there's like the shadow underneath the door frame. And then there's the cast shadow on the top of the door. And the, the shade in the corner of this door frame on the right, that almost like helps you see that it's, but that, that it goes in 
it almost roundedly curves in like it's a column, but it, it's, it's not. Now, I shaded the inside blue because it was such an anomaly that there's such a difference between the right side and the left side of the door frame that I had to separate it when I was showing the kids. Because it's just like this, it, at least in my brain, it just, it wasn't, it wasn't, they weren't compatible. The left side of the door frame, and the right side of the door frame weren't compatible because it was so much thicker. So this really makes a 3D cube and very pleasantly. It's just, it's drastically different than the right side. And that's why I'm going to try and almost suggest that there was a cube on there. The steps are so nondescript that they're made up of verticals and horizontals. Everything that we've done so far, except for the bush, has been either a vertical or a horizontal. That is like the that's like the the piece of it. That, not the piece of it, but that's like that's like the the simplicity of it. I love the I love thinking that it's glass. I love envisioning that it's glass and that there's um, some drapes, some like uh, doily drapes on the inside. Um, the right side door frame is also very dark line. So it's interesting, I mean, the door itself is very dark. Uh, meaning the line that represents the outside of the door is dark. And I think that's what allows it to be, feel like it's pushed in. <clears throat> um, like I, like I, and I, I, I said it in my earlier lesson and it's never been truer. Um, we are out of the woods. That was the hardest part. Um, and that was the closest thing I think to uh, you know, rigid geometry that we're going to be facing um, in this picture. I know Stacey, I didn't need to trigger you with that word. Um, before we add the lattice, um, we're just going to build the structure um, around it. So um, the lattice, we'll just start with an easy rectangle. There's the lattice that is above the door frame. So we can get this party started where there's these X's, these crisscrosses. Up, down, down, up, down, up. Um, there is another, uh, you know, lattice, uh, you know, piece of architecture that goes around that. And then you can kind of see the the, the lattice is going to, um, he builds the frame that the lattice is hung on. You know, there's this rectangle on the left. And then the angle of what I would, I think it might be the road. I don't know. So I'm running, I, I, I'm continuing my verticals and my horizontals so that we can attach the lattice to it. And they just make the, they're, they're roughly the same angle. There's like the spirit of the lattice and then there's the, the law of the lattice. So if you wanted to copy Cezanne mark for mark, you know, that, that, that is fine. Um, if, you want to, if you want to just say, which is what Cezanne was doing here, Cezanne was drawing the spirit of the lattice, meaning he wasn't copying every single piece of wood at the exact same angle. He was just suggesting that there was, that the lattice existed and that they are roughly at these angles. And he actually, you know, you can tell, he just like trails off. He's like, I'm over it. You know, he, 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 he does get over it. Um, I think he's probably just telling himself, well, I'll just fill that in with greenery, you know, who knows. I feel like he's like, listen, I'm not an architect. I'm not a lattice maker. I'm not a trellis maker. 
but for the sake of the picture, you have to, it has to be somewhat consistent. Um, and I think after all of this, let's let's put the like the least the frame of the roof. It's got this. I'm um, starting on the left. It's got this little angle, and then we're going to come across, and we can add as much or as little as that. Of the Spanish tiles as we want. Um, everything we've done so far is an architectural straight line. So I almost feel like I need to reward myself with some abstract shrub shrubbery. And we can get into the, the again, you can copy the mark making of Cezanne's kind of uh, brush strokes. Um, his, the marks that represent the organic matter, um, or you can, you know, make your own. I think there's some, it looks like there's some organic matter that's, you know, climbing up the side of the trellis. It looks like it's gone all the way up. You know, these could be, these could be old, like super old um, ivy or um, even like grapes. I mean, it could be like grapes, a, yeah. a grapevine. <clears throat> and as the, the, the shrubs line the path um, on both sides, being aware of that angle, um, we can then find the bottom of our picture. So at least we've gotten to the bottom and then you can follow this ridge. Look at this ripple right here. I wonder if that's a rooftop too. I don't know. It's, it's very interesting and very two dimensional back here. Um, where this is almost like subterranean. Yeah, there's like a whole level below. <laughs> I think and on the left side, below ground and then above ground. What's that, Grace? I think on the left side, I think there's another like a cellar kind of a thing. But I came across this picture that it, it's in color, so it kind of shows. Get out of town. Will you text it to me? Yeah, it's at the Met apparently. So it's the it's this exact piece. Yeah. Yeah. But in color, yeah. So it shows where the roofs are more easily. I can't believe it. What? Because I did um, I did mine in color. And I can't wait to compare them. So this is my this was my version in color from before. I'm on Monday. Oh, class. nice. Yeah. And I'm freaking out. I cannot wait for this to come through. That's really pretty. I mean, I, I, I may, I may have, uh, you know, envelop, you know, occupied that corner with another step demo. Grace, were you emailing it or were you texting it? I'm texting it. Okay, cool. But it's, yeah, it's kind of a. Oh, it's the link. Yeah. That's fine. But I'm going to try oh. something else. Right. Got it. So I was right, I, at least I was, I was right about the Spanish roofs. Look at that. So I got to, I got to email this to everybody. 
Yeah, sorry, I don't have everybody's um, cell phone. So then what do you think this thing in the top right hand corner is? Hmm. Like, 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 what is this? Yeah. Is it seems too big street? to be a building. Maybe it is. It's a building Maybe the street? next house? It looks more like it's a so tree would, it, would a house be that big though? Maybe. Maybe it's, there's a church. <laughs> Yeah. Or a tree. Yeah, sure, uh, that is a weird thing. The yellow notes. I love all the yellow notes. All right, let me send this to, uh, I'll text this to Maureen and Stacy. And it looks like there's another house on the left where you have a tree on yours. It looks like maybe there's another structure. I thought so too, but I thought I made kind of a, an executive decision. I was like, there's not enough information to make it look like a house. Yeah. So I might as well make it look like a tree. Um, it was just cropped awkwardly. But I, I mean, I, 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 I see, I, I, I had the, the same thought. Um, the way that the, the, this is executed with the, with the brush strokes um it makes a lot more sense you know the whole i mean the way the whole picture makes a lot more sense than this makes sense more sense as a painting than it does as a drawing um especially the trellises but that being said um you know what i was saying with the with the door frame i mean even at this point you know whether it's the oranges or whether it's the door frame you kind of want to like assess where everything is and punch those darks and the um and you can see them i'm zooming in on the picture and um you know it's this the same holds true for the the trellis i mean look at look at you can have the you can have all the light have all the light trellis but then you can also hit them hard with the highlights I guess they're technically low lights. And the amount of cool notes that he uses in the in the trees is super dramatic too. I mean it's a it's a you know it's a blue, it's keyed in red. Um but the path and then there's uh, this book really crops off a lot of the path. So if you go if you go on here the if you look at what the book what this book offers us compared to the um look at all of that look at all of that real estate down there there's that really beautiful elegant um arc that happens in the path they have these like reverberating notes which is just completely omitted um in this in this piece yeah <clears throat> so yeah i mean there's like a whole new bottom of the picture so is it a steep slope going off to the left do you think um i, I mean uh, i mean i i see this as being like still a path that wraps around i mean i think there's a side of the roof here do you think that's where it ends and then you walk down and you walk around i mean could this could you walk all the way this way i think this is a roof no, I think I think there'd probably be a stone wall somehow. So this, this is probably Provence, and there's going to be all a lot of ups and downs and terraces and lots of stone walls. I'm guessing. Yeah, I think so too. I, I, what yeah. I'm saying is like we have more. There's there's more shown. So not only is the is the reference that I send everybody um, that's cropped at the bottom, but it's also cropped on the left. I mean, so, and with the colors, we, you know, where this, this part ends right here, um, the trellis ends there. Mm. It's hard to say. I mean, do you think this is, but now, uh, um, Adele, I'm looking at it now. I mean, I think these are trees. I think this, I mean, if you look at how he, 
approaches all of the foliage it's with these blue puffy the blue puffies yeah. Yeah. and you know the vertical so i mean i see this as a i saw this as a architectural angle at first and i saw this as like a window or like a mm -hmm. the side of a building but having you know looking at it now i think i'm actually i think it i don't i think it is actually uh nature you know and the ambiguity between whether this is roof or path or ground or wall or whatever i mean it's just it's just it's it's all it's very difficult to know um but the, but the entering into the picture through this pathway um i mean it's so huge i mean it's so huge i mean look at that beautiful moment that leads i mean it just leads you right up to the you know this 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 like cast shadow and the warm openness of this path and that edge you know to lead to have that not in the picture you know, I mean, our pictures cropped right here for crying out loud. Yeah, I mean, it's just too bad. Not, I mean, not too bad. I mean, the, the person, I mean, for humanity thought that the, the picture started here for probably so long. <clears throat> I mean, I got this, I got this book from a, an old Micah professor who probably never saw, whatever, it's not that sad. It's a little sad though. I mean, I, I mean, how lucky are we that we know that this picture looks like this now? Yeah. And we could, I could have spent my whole life thinking that it. I might be being a little dramatic. But there is all of this intel over here, though. And luckily, I was able to uh, have I have the real estate on my actual paper to fill it out. Um, and what I did with what I think what I would recommend. And what I think we should, you know, if we're moving on to, you know, this is the, the garden subterranean, um, you can build the, I recommended, and I still do recommend building the tree trunks, left side, right side, left side, right side, left side, right side, building up them, building them up in, in you know, enclosures. And then you got a, ver a thin vertical tree here. We got a thick vertical tree here. Um, so get place the the trunks, and then put the foliage around it. I mean, there are, and it's and it will be a lot of fun. It's just I've, I've been I've been going I've been drawing kind of quickly, and I we we probably need to I probably need to reel it in a little bit. Um, but it is going to be a coloring exercise and I, the, the phases of the picture having, you know, the trellis, the garden, the doorway, the path, then having this whole forest and then, and then having the secondary architecture of, um, of, you know, the house, the distant house. And, you know, they really are three separate, um, three separate components that, you know, do, you know, relate and are pleasing. Um, but each zone kind of deserves to have its own, uh, have its own kind of attention. And I don't want to, I just, I, I, I felt myself starting to rush and there's no need to rush. We have like, we have, we have a half an hour and it's plenty, plenty of time. <clears throat> so I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to reel it back in and just make sure I've got everything that I need, even for the, you know, the, the roof of the trellises and even the trellises themselves. So the, if you look at the roof, the roof is a dark roof, um, you know, up against a lighter background. 
and then immediately you come under and the trellis is a light trellis up against this dark foliage. And the only reason I know this is foliage <laughs> is because of the colors um, in the piece that Grace sent around. Stacy, did you get the did you get the watercolor? I don't know if she can hear me. I think I sent it. Yeah, I sent it. So on the outside of that frame of the trellis, that that thickness um, of the edge you know, is continued. So that's kind of interesting too. So there is, there is kind of a structural element, a thickness of a structural element that, that runs this whole, you know, at the base of the roof, down the side of the wall, and then down that, um, you know, that secondary um, outcropping. I wonder why these trellises don't continue. I'm gonna, yeah. I'm gonna continue them on for my own pleasure. Um, when I'm drawing the foliage for the bushes or for the, uh, you know, what's, what's growing on the trellis, um, I'm, I, I have to, I'm thinking about two things. I'm thinking about how, the, the brush stroke and the spirals and you know, the, the curly cues. Um, and I'm also thinking about the value, meaning you know, when you have colors you know, with paint, you can go you know, dark, really, um, you know, the pressure of the brush stroke, it doesn't make things darker. When you're working with your pencil, the how hard and how often you press your your pencil determines the darkness. Where when your brush, when you're working with a paint stroke, you know you, you choose the darkness and then you it, it's applied, um, you know, with the same with the same movements. Um, I, I haven't necessarily verbalized that disconnect um, between the drawing practice and the painting practice, and I think you know mechanically, conceptually, um, they're very different they're very different. And I think a lot of times I, I noticed that, especially in watercolor, um, a lot of times people will, you know, continually paint over the same place over and over again. And then to the point where like the uh, paper beads up. Um, and I think that habit um, comes from the drawing habit where you can kind of, you know, you build up an area with the darkness by going over multiple times. Whereas in painting, you choose the darkness and you make a single application. And I, I, I need to, I really need to think about that more because I'm like, wow, that might be a, you know, like a huge psychological barrier um, from, you know, a mechanical barrier between um, a divide between being comfortable with painting versus being comfortable with drawing. Now, there's no, I, I'm seeing the, there is a thickness um, to the roof. And this is where I was saying there, you get these arches up and then these arches down. You know, the, the, the tiles themselves are gonna have a thickness. So I might be playing up the Spanish roof um, mentality, but whether you choose to do that or not, there, the, the whole roof itself, does have a broad side and then a thickness. And the, the edge of this thickness is, is wonderful in that, um, you know, it's, it's black and white, then it's clear, and then it's shaded, you know, depending on where you're, you're talking. Um, then there are, of course, these, these the, you know, the, the, you know, the, um, the lattices, whether they're block lattices or whether they're curved, there still is that like that that lattice layering of the texture. And the darkness, I think, represents the grooves in between. So the light's coming from the left. So the far side of each one of those channels 
is going to be shaded. So it's light side, shadow side, light side, shadow side, light side, shadow side, light side, shadow side. Um, and he needs to repeat that until he gets bored. <laughs> um, and then he just lets it disappear, um, you know, over here. Yeah. It's kind of interesting. Um, so I, I'm taking some, uh, you know, artistic liberties. And, you know, the other thing that could be the, could be the scenario as well, I'll look, at, I'll look and see if that's true on the, the painting. What I was thinking is that perhaps there is a, uh, and it, it does look like that, that maybe this, the dark section, you know, this little left side um, mm -hmm. may be in shadow. And, but it's, when I'm looking at the picture in person, um, it doesn't appear to be in shadow. Hmm. It just seems to be like an artistic decision. It's just like, I'm gonna make this bold and red and dark. And then I'm gonna make this half abbreviated and light. I don't, I don't, I'm not exactly sure of the rhyme or reason. I think maybe he um, wants just to maintain focus in here. You know, like almost, he almost like lightly vignettes. So if you go on to Instagram filters or even like photo editing filters, um, there's a thing where you can darken vignette. So you can make that, you can burn the edges of your picture, make them darker, make that so that it almost appears to make the, the inside brighter, bolder, but really you're just darkening the edge. Um, there's there's that dark vignette and then there's another function where i can't remember the name of it but it lightens the vignette it actually makes the edges lighter you know it decreases the the crispness it, and it lightens everything to to the point of being actually white um and that's that's what's actually happening here i mean i i, I teach dark vignettes quite a bit but i don't teach light vignettes um, and if you look at how he, he gives us this arc that runs the whole left side, um, which is essentially a, a light vignette. And so I, I think that, that he was just making this part of the composition, the principal dancer. It's not that this roof doesn't exist. It's just he wants the focus and the attention and the, uh, yeah, he wants the eye to go here. He's, he, he's, he's zoning the picture. And as I look at the color, um, it, essentially the composition is like a skipping stone. Um, you go from this corner, then you jump over to the, this awning and then you jump up to this window. And the three zones of the picture, um, this is higher contrast in value and color. This is the secondary contrast in terms of the color, but it's a lot lighter. And then this one, the, the, va the color is muted, but the value is so intense, meaning it's a dark note in a field of light. So it's, it's actually a light contrast value. This is a middle level color and value. And then this is the boldest, you know, highest contrast in colors and values. So you really move through the picture um, that way. Um, yeah, and I, and I think this oval, this little rounded section, this little um, patio area of the path, um, that curvilinear space really does balance out all of the, you know, the, the linear elements of the straight lines of the trunks and the architecture. <clears throat> Almost like a, like a, like a, uh, a design pool. Uh, that design pool gets completely lost in the reproduction in the book, but is very obvious um, in in the actual painting as part of uh, Cezanne's decision making. And looking at how does Cezanne designed uh, the picture, you know, having this. Uh, straight line block column um, could be really nicely balanced out with the cylindrical column on the, on the other side. And we could, we could probably look and analyze some, some of the architecture of this region. And that might be a thing. I mean, how beautiful would that be to have a, a curvilinear column right next to a block column? Um, that's what it appears to me. 
Um, or I guess he was just going, the other alternative would be that he's going from a, a, a two dimensional rectangle into a three dimensional block. That's probably more likely, but look at this shadow up here. It's so rounded. I'm gonna, I'm gonna emphasize that. <laughs> so as I'm sketching this roof, I'm being very free and playful because I know that my, all I need to do is to show the thickness of that lip and then the roof itself is divided into two parts, the high contrast and um, high chroma, which in my, in, my, in my world is just darker tones and then a soft, uh, lighter tone on the far side. Mm -hmm. uh, trees, are, trees are very similar actually. Um, in that there is a you know a, a light side and a shadow side and they're you know they're, they're very clearly broken down that way there's a light tree up against a dark background and that light side of the tree um, is a in some components it's a cylinder in others it's a uh, a block and it's just kind of that organic amalgamation of the two. The tree, the uh, tree seems to passage um, behind this roof. <clears throat> um, the architecture is not as he doesn't seem like he gives himself the same wiggle room. Um, I wonder what year this is. This is 1872. Does anybody remember what year the, the oranges were from? Um, um. The only reason I bring it up is because if I'm, I'm, if I were to draw a tree the same way he was drawing the, um, the oranges, I would, I would get kind of a, a varied um, edge. You know, the, the, the edge of the tree could be a little to the left, a little to the right. Um, I'm picking up the same line weight variation. 1895. 95, where's the, where the oranges? Yes. Nice, okay, that makes a lot more sense. So Cezanne's a much younger man and is you know he's working these landscapes he's still trying to make things you know uh he's 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 bound you know by the truth of the singular and the the later still life he a, a, had given himself permission um to have the the movement in the picture so uh, yeah this is very early and the piece next to it is very early too um, feels almost like a Gauguin, uh, and I can I can show that to you. Um, makes a lot of sense. Um, I, maybe we can see if we can find some later landscapes. Yeah, look at this one. Wow, cool. <sighs> oh my god let me see if i can zoom in on this one so this is so profoundly different but you can see the um you can see the the, the, the development the change i don't know it's a very very subtle drawing but do you see there's a hopefully it gets in focus look at that tree it's so quiet but look at the look at the edge one two three then it's broken again no no silhouetted edge right here zero 
no transition into the ground. Um, it's just, this is like of the greatest subtlety and the greatest economy. Just find, you know, he's finding them, but then he's, he's, it's free. It, it doesn't have the, it doesn't have the same commitment. It's not, it's a different purpose, completely different. And this is 1895. So it's, it's super late. Yeah. It's just a different, it's just a different thing. This one is 1897. It's, it's a higher contrast, but look at the aggressiveness and mm -hmm. the, the movement in that bow. I mean, you can see the bow moving. It's a, it's essentially a futuristic, it's a futurist piece. Um, you know, so it's almost, he's trying to show the movement. Look at that line, that line, that line, that line. I mean, there it's all, he, he gives it to you. He gives it all to you. And the, look at the bow, it's almost, it feels like it's cracking right there. It's an earthquake. Totally. I mean, it, it is, a, it's, a, it's a motion, it's a motion picture before that would even, and yeah. Let me zoom out so you can see the whole thing. It, it's better, it's actually better um, when you, see, uh, well, obviously it's better when you see the whole thing, but. Come on, focus. There it is. Look at this one. Look at the disconnect between the arc here and the arc up there. He's still using passage, though. Mm -hmm. Look at look at the reverberations of these as they go up. It's almost like a sound wave all the way out of the picture. Yeah. This one still feels like it has architecture in it. Do you think those are buildings down there? Maybe. Neat. Yeah, this is not for the faint of heart. <laughs> I'm scared. I mean, it's it's almost it's it's very it's very startling. It's just a different man too. You know, the different man with different intentions and different understanding. It's wonderful to see that, though. Sorry, I didn't mean to get distracted. Yeah, look. 1880. Look at this one. He's still, like, he's basically still, like, kind of tracing the outline. This is 1883. But the 18 set this ten and this one is 10 years before that one. It's great. It was important. I think that was that was good to see. This the, this piece is also very accessible. Um and it's 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 more traditional, it's more obvious, but he um let me zoom back out, sorry. It's still beautiful. It's just a, a, a younger man's version. Still says on. Grace, thank you so much for that uh, that watercolor mm. photo. It made, really made a big difference. <laughs> and right after. And it's, you know, that it is true. I mean, the, as far as the drawings go, it still holds up, but the, uh, the, the, what they, with, for color pictures, we're just so lucky to have all of it. So with, um, the techniques of adding the foliage here. I'm going to do the spirals and then I'm going to um, blend them out and then probably go back in on top. This is me, you know, having to compromise, having to do the most with my pencil because I don't have paint. So the look, of course, is going to be a little bit different.
Same with the tree, too. Meaning you can blend, you can soften up some of the values in the tree in the same way that you can soften the values in the branches and the, and the leaves. <clears throat> so as the, you know, as these get blended, then the, the need to punch um, some of that line work and the, the blending just softens the, uh, you know, it just softens the, the graphite so much that you, you lose um, most of the, the linear directional, you know, the textural properties. You get, you achieve the values more evenly but then you lose the texture. So just do one and then the other. And then if it's still not dark enough, blend it again and then come back in. The, uh, the treatment is never going, I mean, the, the, pe the pencil is its own thing. Watercolors is its own thing. Oil is its own thing. They have, there's areas where the medium overlaps. Most, I'd say 80% of all the concepts that are necessary for each one, they do overlap, but the unique properties of each medium um, are, uh, you know, need to be considered. And also forgiven, you know, like what we're doing with pencil, um, it's never gonna look exactly like a watercolor. So, for, you know, so forgive yourself not only forgive yourself, but maximize what's best about pencil um, and make and make it, you know, make your drawing better. And rather than just attempting to make your pencil look like watercolor. That makes sense. Yeah. I made my awning a little bit big. I always do that. I've always done that. You know, where this line is steep, it should have been shallower. Yeah, I did that too. Oh, I forgot all about that house back there. <laughs> um, Oops. No worries, it, it, it'll, it, it practically, at this point, it practically draws itself. Um, and there's a, this little L-shape, upside down L-shaped corner that has its, you know, the, the sunken value, has a, a, a quiet door frame and a thickness. And then the awning itself hangs over and that casts a shadow underneath it. So the awning throws a shadow and then the door frame throws a shadow. Boom, boom. Boom. My window's up a little bit high, but it's all right. I got this corner and there's a miniature awning on that. It's a nice little directional change. So this awning looks down into the left. This awning looks down into the right. You're seeing the inside of this door frame. You're seeing the inside of this window. Nice. I guess it technically should be kind of flat, but there's different emphasis. Um, there seems to be very light suggestions of uh, of the side of the building. I don't know what it is. You might not know if this is just huge roof. Oh, no, knows? I am going to close off the top of my picture slightly off screen. I have to zoom out more so that because my you know the having seen the. Um, Having seen the watercolor, everything everything kind of changes now um, because now I've got all this extra, you know, real estate. You know, I've added, you know, maybe 
ten percent. I mean, I think that that bottom part you know, really changed the the rectangle. Yeah, with these diagonals, um, I mean, I just picked up on it here. I mean, there's this angle, and then it's repeated here, it's repeated here. Yeah, at least for that rooftop, you can repeat that angle. And this angle is different than the angle of the roof. <clears throat> Oh, well, there's another counter. What, what do you think this is? This comes down and there's another little, it's like shed outcropping. This window, you kind of want it to be in perspective, but if he doesn't offer it, kind of disappears into the foliage. Let me check out that building in the, uh, the watercolor. So oh, yeah, okay, cool. So this is this looks like this is a shadow down here. I like that. You do get a nice look at these little series of S curves. Oh my god, I don't know if you can see that. There's these little the top of the that front roof. Boom, 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 boom. It's pretty. Does the job big time. <clears throat> There's a little chimney. It almost looks like a, a, a soda bottle. You know, there's a lot of horizontal elements here so this obviously you have the sides that passage into the roof you have this little uh cap up here maybe even two separate cylinders a lot of horizontal um we used to draw we used to draw like bottle lips um today and sketch this it'd be kind of funny you know these would be like amstel light bottles <laughs> Mm -hmm. And then you see the, yeah, I mean, it looks, it looks like a beer bottle top, even more so than the one I drew. I mean, you look at the reproduction that they gave us and then you look at the details, you know, the detail of this and it's just not even just incredible. Like it's just all that info is right there. I mean, you can get where this is probably this is literally larger, closer, and in more focus than if you the naked eye on the naked drawing. Like if you had his piece in front of you, you still probably wouldn't. At least I couldn't, unless I had my readers on. <laughs> You're wearing them. Not wearing them now, but yes, the technology makes it very much accessible. <laughs> I added so much detail to the, my roof to the, to the chimney. I think it's I think it's the most accurate part of the entire picture. It's a little a little mansard roof windows that hang out above the treetops. Window frame. Bunch of my darks. Hello. Did Tucker just come and say hi? Bailey's been sleeping. Oh. Oh, my dog is sleeping in the back this whole time. Uh -huh. I was like, where is he? Usually, usually he starts asking for some food.
Well, I don't think Cezanne, he did, he did not disappoint. I got, got two good ones. I, I I I love the color. I'm gonna add, I'm putting my color one up here, so I can nice yeah anal, analyze the the difference. I love yeah. that I, I went. Beautiful. I love that I went so green. I, I mean, obviously, but I mean, he went green uh, with my. my my approach to downstairs was pretty good. And I think if I came, <clears throat> if I came through with a blue pencil, you know, blue color pencil for the trellis and then some of the deeper shadows inside that door, um, you know, my picture really lacks, you know, that blue. I kind of traded the blue for the green, but the color pencils are very compatible. I mean, you know, like, and I didn't go very heavy on the color pencil on this paper. I mean, it could really, I could dress it up. I mean, I, and I, I, I did the blue on the inner door frame, but I should have continued the blue into the trellis. And I, I went with the black. Well, and I went with the black because I was going off of the, I was going off the black and white. I should have been smarter. Um, I love the treatment of my trees, though. I mean, I think the treatment of my trees with the color pencils look very naturalistic, and and the whole co the the colors of the p of my piece are harmonious, um, and probably even more naturalistic. I, mean, I don't know where he gets away with the blue the blue trees. Yeah, I had a lot of fun with my trees. Um, can we have a can we have a quick review, Stace? Can I see your trees? Uh, okay. <laughs> I'm not finished the composition, but sure. Let's just see where you are. Yeah, I'm gonna. I'm pinning you, Stacy. Okay. I think I need to flip, and I don't know how. Uh, here. <clears throat> oh, nice. Ooh, you so did exciting. it. You did have fun with your trees. I like the yeah. darks. My gosh, it looks like you're looking, it looks like we're looking into like a keyhole of like some magic, <laughs> like magical I dimension. I can't see it. Yeah. What do I do on here? Well, I mean, you have to look. I pinned okay, stage. got it. Stacy, show it again. I didn't see it. Oh, okay. Oh, nice. Really yeah, nice. It's, it's so inviting. Yeah. It is. The perspective is very strong. As usual, oh. mine is ginormous. <laughs> All right, Maureen, let's see it. They did well, a... I, I, I'm not anywhere near as done as you guys are, maybe because I'm so ginormous. But to... oh. oh, nice. <laughs> Yeah, but you got you got your saison yeah. style. Your saison style. You really do. In the house. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. In the house. <laughs> no pun intended. Yes. Uh, it's right, my first day back. I haven't sketched in six months, you guys. So this is where really you wouldn't know it. Miss Just Rainey, been so you wouldn't crazy know. Crazy off the chart, busy. I bet. So well, it's good to have you back. Oh, oh it's, it's been so great to be back. I love the I love the, the the variety of styles just among all of us. I know. <laughs> yeah. Rini, you really got the Cezanne line work. Well, I don't know about that, but I I really like his line work. I, I love it. I love to mimic it because it's um it works for me. Where Trevor that, Trevor has that yeah. gift of finishing it. You know, you can you can visualize a roof that's not there and finish it. You know, I that I find that amazing. Oh, thanks, <clears throat> um, Grace. I've got you pinned. If you want to hold it up, I had one of the kids. One of the kids who he's like, like viciously independent. Not viciously. He's like pleasantly, but like very, very. He likes to do his own thing. 
and he drew this, but he made the the door frame uh, round like a hobbit. Oh, hole. that's beautiful. Oh, cool. That's great, Grace. Yeah, look at Grace, those. Grace, a little a li oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Freeze it. Um, yeah, so, okay. Well, Can we pretty. see? I know your oranges are right next to it. Can I see those as well? A little down. Yeah, the whole I, I love good, good. I love these spinning oranges. They're like they're like playful, oh, the they're like little fun. puppies. <laughs> little yeah. playful puppies. These are beautiful. <laughs> um, that was great. Okay, awesome. Um, Adele, let's see what you got. Yeah. Oh, Ooh. lovely. Uh, yeah. Adele, a little <laughs> closer to you. Yeah. I like the um. I like the value range in the, the, the trees feel very puffy and yeah, more yes. like, like the, um, they almost feel like they have silhouettes. Like I, I with Cezanne's like the trees just disappear, but you right. know, your trees have like a dark, a medium and a light. And I think that right. three tone value range help make them more anchored or solidified or something like that. And then, really? yeah. And then the architecture is very, uh, is cool. Especially the, the, the background architecture feels really nice. Yeah. It works really nice. Oh, and look at your shrubs in the foreground. You could. Well, that's, I was just going to say, that's the landscape architect in her. Yeah, <laughs> totally. Yeah. I was going to say, if it, this is up your alley. Up the garden. <laughs> yeah. And I like how you really, um, on the trellis work, you, um, I told myself I was going to go back in and lift and erase. Yeah. But you really mm. did just that. Beautiful. Yep. Yeah, I they, agree. Yeah, they, they, they oh, totally. the trellis work. Yeah. Right. Totally. It's like a, it's a, gra they gradually fade out and rather than erratically, like, it, yes. it's, a, it's like mine is, mine's a disaster. Well, yeah. I'm learning, I'm learning to use the tortillion more yeah. and, you know the the trellis work i did tight trellis work around the door and then extended it with the tortillion yeah so you didn't even need so you drew with the tortillion yeah and yeah so, yeah, yeah i should probably and that's what made it good. um sort of fade out like that right yeah and you can do the same thing with like the objects that are off in the distance too yeah. just yeah. You get your line work really oh. quiet nice. cool. trevor can i see yours once again please yes let me put this Screen share back up. <clears throat> yeah, that's beautiful. A little further away from the screen. So did we did we determine that that object on the far left side is another tree or a tree in front of a another house? I drew it as a tree, but I have no idea. Okay. I drew it as a tree and was about to make it into a house, and then well, I, it looked like there's a structure behind it, but I can't tell. I I just thought maybe you guys knew. It's a very well, Mediterranean look to yours. Yeah, and I don't know if it's just mm -hmm. the the pink. Well, the tile I think he, or... you know, he put red tile on the roof of the big house, yeah. which Dunn didn't do, and I think that oh, also. Oh yeah. Eyes yes, all together. Totally. Yes. Um, do we have time to see more oranges? Oh, yeah. I mean, do you want to photograph people's oranges? Sure. Yeah. Or if, you, or, on... or if you all, or if you want to actually, if everybody would text me photos of their drawings today, that okay. would be really nice because yeah. it's there's just such a quality difference between screenshots. Yeah, um, agree. I'll do that. But the, live, but the live action, so then, yeah, when you finish them. Okay. Remember, can I see your oranges since you're already on screen? Yeah. yeah. Well, here's my ones from yesterday or from Monday. And then I lost the other ones. Oh, no, here it's your bunny. Oh, cool. I know. That's the cute. They're so I cute. love your bunny. It's cute. Full moon. Full oh, moon. No. Full moon on the 17th. <laughs> I guess I should zoom in a little bit now, huh? Nice. Yes. So nice. Good day. So nice. Um, all right, party people. 
I have to take these dogs out. <laughs> well, um, thanks for everything. It was so good to see everybody. Yeah. See yes, you guys, see you guys and next happy week. And healthy new year to all. Mm -hmm. And I'll be sending you payment for the new session. Oh, yeah. yes. Oh, Maureen, I, I, Maureen, yours came through too. So that was good. Thank you. Good. Yeah. Thank you for letting that's how me I know. Knew you were, that's how I knew you were going to join. Yeah. Okay. I was fist pumping. <laughs> all right, guys. I'll see you later. <laughs> all right. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.